Hey everyone, so it's been a while but I'm back with another tutorial. Um, I was recently asked on how to make opaque glass for VR due to its performance increase compared to translucent materials. Uh, as you can see here, I've got two spheres set up, one which has a standard surface translucency volume glass on there with translucency and screen space reflections enabled and the other is actually using a dither node and we can get the same effect for much less performance so if I actually go to optimization view modes shader complexity and um, we can actually see that the one on the right is the more intense one which is the standard way of making glass whereas the one on the left is actually using the dither node considerably cheaper so I'm going to show you how to do that um, what we need to do is first open up uh, material so we need to create a material go to if I can find it, I've lost it. Um, what am I doing? Materials. Material M underscore glass underscore VR. So I'm just calling this VR because it's mainly used for VR due to its performance uh, abilities essentially. It's just way better. But it, I believe it can be used on mobile and I've, I've obviously on desktop as well. So it's probably a personal preference and performance that you can get out of it. So open this up. Uh, all we're going to do is we're going to change blend mode to masked and I'll check against my other one, make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, We also want to do two-sided, although I don't see much of a difference in this. I'm thinking mainly if you've got an object which has two phases, it could be more beneficial, but I haven't seen much of a performance issue with this. Um, in here as well, if you've got it, you can also enable high quality reflections and planar reflections but we're not going to do it for this one. So we're going to start off by holding 3 on the keyboard and creating a constant 3 vector. So we're going to turn this into prominent and call it base color. Uh, you can actually get that by doing constant 3 vector and you'll get the same node. Uh, we're just going to plug that into base color and we'll keep this organized so base color without spelling mistakes. And all we want to do now is do a metallic. We're going to actually put this up to 1. Because this is where we're going to get most of our nice looking colors from. Ah, we'll change this to do an offset blue. Or offset white. Cool. So we've got a, a nice silver going. And roughness. We're also going to need to set that. Uh, convert parameter. <laughs> metallic. Definitely feels like it's been a while since I made a video. So metallic. Convert a parameter. Roughness. Um, we're going to keep the roughness at zero because we want all them pretty reflections. And now is the fun part. We can actually do the opacity mask, and we can use the dither node. So we're going to use dither temporal AA into the opacity mask. And um, we're going to create two variables from that. That's not going to do it. So we can hold down one on the keyboard, and we can get two of them. We'll plug them right in. We'll do converted parameter and dither intensity. Dither intensity. Converted parameter, and we'll do dither random intensity. So you can see at the minute now we've gone completely invisible. We have nothing showing in the viewport. We'll change this to 0 0.5 and 0.3. So now you can see what we've got actually looks like glass. Pretty much simple as that. So I'm going to hit apply on this one. And I'll move that into a bit. So we've got a material here. I'll replace this one. and it'll compile shaders and then that's pretty much it we can do what we can do now is create a material instance I'll just do glass under the app and from this window we can actually access the parameters that we just made 
So I'll do that. And you can see just by toggling what we've got, uh, we need to enable. Come on. There. Be helpful if I put it on the object. So we've got that there, and we can actually change the values that we've got within the editor to control what we actually see in the scene. So this is more per personal preference, but from what I've got on my values, 0.5 and 0.5 for the dither intensity, 0.3 for the, the random, metallic is one, and the roughness is zero works extremely well but it's a lot of tweaking and you can just play around with it. You can obviously change the color as well. Um, what we want to do now actually is we'll take a roughness map. So if we open it back up from here, what we'll actually do is drag in a roughness material. And rather than having it so you've just got the material and you can't change the value we'll actually set up a, um, a switch so we'll create a switch parameter static switch parameter and we'll call this use roughness map use roughness map cool uh, is it going to do it? we got it ah we didn't add that one in there that's why did we do metallic? No. Okay. Metallic roughness, they're all organized. So now we've got this one. What we're going to do is we're going to detach this roughness value and we're going to say when this switch is false, we're just going to use a static value. So 0 to 1 to control roughness. But what we want to do, if it's true, and I'll change that. what we're going to do if it's true is we're actually going to use a texture so we'll turn this into parameter as well roughness texture and we'll do a value that way we can actually control this as well so I just call that roughness map intensity get some water So we'll set this as a default value of 1, uh, roughness we want as 0, so I believe that is everything set up correctly, check my notes, yep, I think I used a different texture but we'll be alright, so hit save, and now what we can do is we can open up the material instance again. So we've got the material instance, and from here, we now actually have access to the roughness channel, which we've just made. So this is the switch. So we can flick that. And now what we'll do is you'll, we now have the roughness driven by a texture. I didn't put it in the right value. So roughness. So you Something's in the wrong place. The roughness map. Uh, with this one, roughness one, you're in the right place. Right place. Okay, I'm not too sure what's going on there. That's me just trying to be a perfectionist. Organized. So, we can actually drive this material now using the other value attached to it. So one is the texture just using itself. And then we can change the value based on which way we want to go to get some more unique results. So that's pretty much it for this one. Um, if you guys have any more questions or 
is a bit confused or anything, just drop us a comment down below and I'll get onto it. I'll see what I can do, see if I can help you out. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, it helps a lot. And also share it if it's something you are interested in. So I hope that helped. Oh, one question, one thing before I forget. Um, with the meshes that use the dither material, I recommend setting the cast shadows to off. So disabling it, otherwise you get a, a weird effect on the floor when you build lighting. If you're just using dynamic lights, you're, you're okay. But as soon as you start doing uh, light builds, it'll start causing problems. But you can see in here, it's pretty much just using the same material. So I'll apply this on there. It's just using one that I made earlier. So, and all this scene is using for the reflection capture is a box reflection. Where is he? There he is. So I'm using a box reflection which encompasses the the whole scene with the brightness set to 4. Which you, yours will be naturally set to 1. So it'll look more like this. But hopefully that's helpful. Uh, it gets you to where you want to go. I'm sorry this one seems a little bit rushed. But I'm going to try and start getting on top of it. So yeah. Hope all is well. Hope this helps. And I'll see you next time.